um, getting the bag as a mindset is a bad mindset. So this is um, this is in response to the video that's gone viral of uh, Ja Rule um, promoting some Greek um, restaurant somewhere in America. Now more details have come out since the story is leaked. Uh, since this uh, video has kind of gone viral, um, supposedly Ja Rule is doing this show where businesses pitch their businesses pitch pitch their pain points to him, and he kind of puts together some sort of plan of action that's going to get them visibility or whatever maybe. Um, I guess because of his fire festival debacle, he's seen as some sort of marketing genius, which is a bit of a piss take in some regard because you know he probably is not aware people are laughing at him more than laughing with him. But hey, you gotta get what you got. You gotta do what you gotta do. So now the details have come out that supposedly he did this promo for free, right? He actually was, you know, I think him and his team reached out to the restaurant, wanted to have some help, so they put together the skit and they gave him a bit of free promo. And judging by the amount of press that has covered it, it's basically worked out really well. But I have an opposite take on it. I still think it's another illustration as to why I think the whole premise around, you know, getting the bag, securing the bag, um, you know, um, you know, picking up checks, whatever those kind of, um, you know, in vogue statements are at the moment about making sure you get paid and being an entrepreneur. I think they're a bit flawed. I think there is such a thing as bad money. Like, you know, people say, oh, all money is good money. I don't believe that. Or it's like all attention is good attention. I don't believe that either. I think you would much rather have um, the money. I don't know. I, I look at it similar to like influencers. There was a period in time where um influencers well especially in the beginning when they weren't called influencers when they were just people that kind of you know maybe moved culture in some way shape or form from their little platform that they had or small audience they had usually it's because they were promoting or bigging up stuff that they actually used and they actually supported day in day out and if and usually they were trying their best to get the attention of those brands and not being successful at it right the brands would ignore them they don't really see the value in it and then it got to a point where um it was just obvious that the influencers were actually um adding to the bottom line of these businesses more so than their big glitzy advertising campaigns and billboards and celebrity endorsements and maybe as well because of the metrics you know the the, sorry, the analytics it's a lot easier to actually track um how much value an influencer is bringing to your company brand service whatever than it may be to see how impactful a billboard was to your bottom line you know you could actually follow the link and see how many people click that link i did i am to basket did a successful checkout blah 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 so that might be part of it but i think they were, then it somehow just changed where it went from being that and then it went from being that kind of influencer to then being an influencer who is kind of um, a reluctant one right if you have a big enough following even for myself i have like what two thousand followers or something right on instagram and even i get you know um even even I do sometimes get random emails from shitty companies selling, you know, some bootleg Apple headphones or some shitty watch or something trying to get me to post it on my feed to get, you know, X amount of pounds or to get something off or to keep the item, whatever maybe. So as soon as it went from the brands reaching out to influencers to get some sort of exposure, it changed the game because then influencers were just, you know, they were um they were essentially putting themselves off for sale right whoever was the highest bidder could get their endorsement get their sort of like they could s attach their ip towards the, on top of the brand and sometimes it damages your ip or it damages your brand integrity um or your brand image whatever that word is right it, it's not really a good thing and i think you're all suffering from the same thing from what we've seen from the debacle at fire festival to him trying to put together another festival him trying to restart the app he's just been you know it's just been a public l after l and it's funny because these public l's it could be completely different in private it could be that he's you know doing some really big moves behind the scenes that we're not aware of but you know in the court of public opinion perception is key right you want to be perceived one way and he's just not perceived as cool anymore at all and it's really sad to see considering i grew up on ja Rule, right um hearing these songs and house parties and stuff and it's just so weird how an artist can just dive can suddenly go from being you know cool and red hot. not get me wrong maybe some of his songs were corny but he was never looked at as like an uncool dude um you wouldn't you know his songs might have been a bit annoying after a while but you didn't think he was not cool and now i think a lot of kids coming up i was looking at him thinking this guy's a bit of a dork
but what can you do and here's let's watch the video so we can get a bit of a context to it but this is the actual video that was going all over the place on twitter let it load up come on son ba, 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 ba. Oh. come on son it's not loading the quickest today maybe the internet maybe it's the abundance of windows who knows okay let's see here it's finally loading yep i think so i'm still gonna, gonna defecate there you go it's murder boom let's get this up from here this is for papa christo's greek deli let's go. it make you want to slap your mama Pop Christo's got the best motherfucking gyros, gyros you ever f***ing ate in your life. So good. Take one lick, lick tip. You got to have Peter's. Peter's. Pop Christo Peter's. They got everything. I'm going to just give you a rundown of some of my favorites. They got tzatziki. Oh, hold on. Octopod tequila. Well, uh, whatever, but it's good. Abola <laughs> mano soup. Cop pizza, and they got wine too. I'm telling you, and it's not you know, don't get me wrong, it's not a bad thing, but it's a thing that I it kind of always grates me a little bit when you hear some of these ad reads on podcasts and they clearly have no idea what is sponsoring their podcast, they're just reading it out and fumbling the words and mispronouncing shit, and clearly just you know, have not invested any time trying to understand or research a product that they're trying to advertise for people to click on. I guess, in some respects, it's, there's a quite an ironic humor to it right the fact that they just they managed to swindle a brand out of a bag so that they can just get sponsored and that they hope that they're making it so obvious to their audience that they clearly don't give a fuck because they've already been paid right because most of these um advertising brand placements you get on a podcast or you get on a youtube show usually they pay you a little bit of an upfront fee you get something before you even advertise it um, and then, of course, you get some add-ons on top, right? If you're able to, you know, convert a certain amount of people, blah, 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 blah. Some, you know, terms and conditions are met. You can get some more money, but you've already been paid. You've already got the chunk of your money. So anything on top is a bonus. And you're not really incentivized to push it that hard. Um, but it just runs me out the wrong way, you know? It doesn't matter. I know really and truly, but come on. If you're going to promote a Greek deli, at least try and pronounce the words right. Or if you're gonna pick some things that you you say your favorite things, just pick a couple of things that are your favorite things. For sure, you've eaten something on that menu before. In all his life, being you know a very successful hip hop artist, I'm sure he's been to like some cuisines that have served that kind of food before, or some restaurants sorry, that served that kind of cuisine before. I'm sure he has. So to just be willfully unaware and ignorant of it is a bit rubs me up the wrong. And again, it's just another indication of just. Um, just how much of a shit show that Fire Festival thing was, isn't it? And that's a good. That's just not not unfair to bring it up now, but it's like, God damn it! Come on down to Papa Cristo. You can't even pronounce the food. It's so goddamn good. Show them what you're working with, Papa. Show them how you do it. Hey, yeah, Papa. Hey, where are you, Papa Cristo? This is are funny. You here? Papa, Papa, Papa Cristo, are you here? Come on down to Papa Cristo, two seven seven one West Boulevard, Pico. Oh. You can call right now and get it delivered. Poppy Christos, ooh, make you want to do the dance. Opa! Cringe, man. Like, I guess you could say he probably doesn't need the money. And if he's doing it as like an, you know, um, as his kind of, you know, his philanthropy thing for the year fair play right if you've just been the cool dude but you can't deny this looks really bad in it like it's just what are you doing um of course it gives someone at like 50 and a sworn enemy of jar rule more enemy more sorry more ammo um to point towards him but maybe as well from jar Rule's side he probably just doesn't really give a shit this is part of his new personality that he's developed where he's kind of gone through the whole fire festival debacle and he sort of developed a thicker skin now where he's sort of kind of because that's a good thing, to be honest, right? If he's able to sort of take what he learned from Fire Festival and how the you know social media can quote unquote cancel you or make you or judge you, I don't know, is it cancel? Whatever that word is that happened to him. And if he's able to lean into it and just kind of play up the fact that he's a bit of a doofus, right? Like he's a lovable oaf, that might work out for him. 
But if he's generally trying to be like, you know, Mark Cuban, right? And he's trying to kind of broaden his portfolio and be this businessman when we clearly know he hasn't got the brains for it, right? Um, and it's not a sad indictment, right? Not everyone could be an entrepreneur. It's not as if like, you know, I don't know, entrepreneurism, entrepreneurism or entrepreneurs or the whatever that term is that you describe people that want to do that thing um, has it's gone through a weird little phase isn't it? it's not even a phase it's been a few years now where suddenly it's turned into like wanting to become a basketball player or something right it's turned into one of those sort of things where no one can really tell you you can't do it until you can't do it right that's the kind of thing like you can say you want to be in the nba but until you get to a point where everything is pointing towards a direction that you just haven't got it that's when you stop but no one can no one you know it's a bit unfair to tell somebody they can't do a thing. You've got to let them try. And I guess entrepreneurism is the same thing, but there's so much at risk of being an entrepreneur, right? Money, time, that you just can't get back, right? Money you can get back, but time you can't. Um, mental health, there's a lot of things that will, you know, fall by the wayside trying to pursue a business or to run several businesses at the same time, especially in the area or field that you're not an expert at, right? And I'm sure Ja Rule's not an expert in restaurants. So that's the interesting part of it. Um, but, you know, again, he maybe doesn't take himself too seriously. Maybe it's all laugh and jokes to him. But it's just sad to, for my, me personally, being a fan of his music, um, to see somebody that I deemed as being cool when I was in school just turn into an absolute cornball. But, hey, what can you do?